Hi friends, welcome. Today I want to share with you a photo walk that I embarked on when I, I went to a Renaissance fair. This happened before I went on my New York City photo walk. We were in the area visiting some family, and by area I mean the East Coast. My wife's sister has always enjoyed Renaissance fairs, which I think is awesome. That's way more exciting than you know, a lot of American activities, um, such as doing... Uh, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> her, her husband, and their son, Henry, like to go to these events, and it's fun because Henry is very small. He looks like a hobbit, and I find that to be quite precious, but I thought a photo walk at a Renaissance Fair would be a very lovely experience. I did not have the GoPro, but I did take some photos. So we arrived at this Renaissance Fair in Annapolis, Maryland. It was a large Renaissance fair. I don't know what the metrics are around the size of Renaissance fairs, but this felt like a, a large one. It was really fantastic because it was in a forest. It felt very immersive. You didn't feel like you, you were in modern times and there was like some Renaissance stuff set up around you. The second you walked through the gate, you felt like you went into another, like you traveled through space and time, came out on the other end, and there were a bunch of people wearing renaissance era things renaissance activities were happening and then there were you know of course there were people selling modern food items like i think they had funnel cakes i don't know if they had the machinery to create a funnel cake between 1300 and 1600 uh, so it was it was a very diverse experience of old and new. Now the first photo that was taken at the Renaissance Fair that day was taken of me. I did not take this photo with my own hands, but I had a portrait made. It was very special. I was a king. I'll see if I can find that photo. You bow to no one. But one of the early photos I made was a, a portrait of somebody wearing a pretty bizarre looking mask. And this was commonplace in this event. Uh, there were lots of fantastic costumes happening. Now, um, I was very close to this person and that was made a lot easier by the fact that, that there were so many people there. I mean, it was unbelievably crowded. If the idea of taking photos of a stranger makes you anxious, going to environments like this is a good way to work on that because people expect you to take photos of them in these types of environments when they're wearing. And my wife just reminded me, um, and I knew this, but I forgot, and I'm, I feel very ashamed of myself. If you go to a Renaissance fair, and you see people wearing clothing items, they're not costumes, they're garb. Very important. They will stone you, actually. There's like a place for it. And then it's in the middle, so everybody eats and then watches people die. And they're like, you're like, yeah, that guy probably called it a costume. I decided to crop in real tight on this one. I love the kid coming out of the right shoulder si horn situation. My wife pointed out another thing that I think is glorious. Uh, the guy behind the mask looks like Toby from The Office. <laughs> so that makes this photo much more, much more exciting. Now at one point, there were a, a group of militia that came through the crowd of people, stopped in a spot, and performed a demonstration. They had spears in their hands, and there was a guy who was a great showsman uh, who pranced around them and told everybody w about military techniques and what they would do with those spears, how they would set up the spears so that if an army came towards them, the spears would go directly through the horses very exciting family friendly stuff. I love the guy's personality. I love performers and performances in general. I think it's a it's a, an amazing art form. It's very inspiring. So in this photo, a couple of things were happening. One, I was able to capture the, I, I suppose they would be pikemen. Uh, I, I focused on one of the guys and the other people were kind of around them as secondary subjects. And this guy was staring almost directly, if not directly at me, which I think made the photo stronger. And then I have the leader coming around with his mug, exuding such bravado as he was during this performance. And I'm happy that I was able to capture that. Uh, it was an extra little cherry on top for the photo. I also captured a, a wider photo of the whole group of the militia folk. And you can see here one of the issues that I was running into consistently, and that was the sheer amount of people in the background. It was very hard to create an organized frame, um, but it was good practice. It's good to go into situations like this because it makes you better. 
Uh, but you'll see that a lot of these photos are crop, cropped in quite tight because I wanted to get rid of the stuff around the edges that didn't add to the photo. I captured another photo of a man in a mask. This time the guy had the mask on the back of his head, which I thought was an interesting twist. I focused in on that, cropped out everything else. You were able to get some of the, the food court signs in the background. Everything was incredibly decked out with renaissance-ness. There was not a normal sign except perhaps like when you go to the bathroom, like don't pee on, like wash your hands or what have you. I'm sure you have, there's some regulations around that. But in general, everything, everything. Avoid the black plane. <laughs> wash your hands. Captured a quick photo as we were moving along of a guy playing a hammer dulcimer. Uh, this is a very beautiful instrument. You've probably heard them before, even if you haven't seen them or know what they are. He was very talented, and my wife was capturing a video of him for our other channel. Now, there was a large gathering place and this gathering place was situated around a semicircular arena it was more oval shaped rectangle it's like a rectangle with rounded corners i su i suppose like you take photoshop and then you round the corner uh so this is where the big events would happen you would have jousting here and you would have archery and demonstrations of swordsmanship and there was a like a, a um a bird uh, catch catching no, the birds would catch prey that sort of thing which I guess was a big deal back in the day that's how you caught your food for dinner they had birds flying around and landing on things it was very exciting it was good times lots of different types of birds of prey very scary if they were six feet long we would all be dead uh, they would have been picking up humans and taking us to into trees and killing us and it would not have been a fun family environment at one point there was a crowd gathering for one of these events and i decided to turn my attention to the crowd because there was there was a waldo in the crowd and i think this guy planned this very genius of this man to go to a place where there would be a big crowd of people and be the waldo that just brings happiness there's nothing bad about that unless he was selling meth <laughs> Meth Waldo. <laughs> so I captured a tighter photo of him making the crowd fill up most of the frame. Then I captured a wider photo because I wanted to get the castle in the background as well. Also on the other side of that castle, there were lovely musical performances happening. There were very talented bands. I, I, I was expecting that that would not be the case. Um, a lot of musical performances let me down because I've been a musician for such a long time. And and that may sound like I'm, I'm being... Um, Hmm. pompous I suppose but I some people are probably more happy than me because they can just enjoy simple music but it's boring to me so they had like bagpipes and like mermaid women singing and it was good times I don't really know what the formal term would be for this bird show I do apologize to those who are so passionate about birds of prey and their their wonderful attributes but it was very interesting. I quite enjoyed it. At the beginning, they had people walk around with the birds on the, well, actually all throughout the show, they had people walk around with the birds sitting on these perches that like they were, they were built specifically for this event. It was very impressive. They were painted. Uh, there was like a little spot for, a, oh, wait, no, hold on. I think he's holding, can he put his tool there? I don't know. This entire bird experience provided for a plethora of photo taking opportunities. I had a lot of fun. One of the issues I ran into, and you can see it here, is that there was a lot of people in the background. And so I had to be intentional about that. Uh, one of the things that really helps with that is taking your f-stop and dropping it down to like 2.8 or zooming in really tight and creating some compression as to separate, uh, well, the compression and also blur out the background as to separate the subject from the people in the background. But also all throughout these photos, cropping was an in incredibly important piece of the puzzle to make things work. Making sure faces don't come in in a strange way, making sure there's no like bar poking in from the, the side, cutting off flags and tops of buildings and trees and such and, and, and pleasing ways. I took a photo where one of the handlers was further away and then I took a photo where one of the handlers was closer and you can see the difference in how the photos turned out. I love the look of the guy in red. 
I think it's fantastic, and I think I'm going to dress like that from now on. He also had a very kind demeanor. You could see it exude from him, and that was inspiring. But you can see the, the one where he's further away, and I had to zoom in tighter, has a bit more of a polished, almost cinematic kind of quality to it. And the one where the guy is much closer, uh, and I'm zoomed out with a wider focal length, feels a bit more raw and photojournalistic. Uh, this is an example of how every focal length has a different character. Now, in the closer photo, you can see that the instrument he's holding is on the side of his body to where it could obstruct his face, but it's not. And that's something that I paid attention to. Being able to see his, his face was useful for this photo. And also being able to see the bird and then, the, and then secondarily seeing the glove on his hand and the, the thing he's holding itself. All of that context makes for a more interesting photo. And then everything else is built around it, such as the crowd and the flags and the environment. Now, this was a very tight photo of one of the main personalities of the event. She did a fantastic job. You can tell she had a lot of experience. Uh, she was dealing with birds that didn't want to necessarily cooperate, and it seems like she every time she does this performance, to some extent, the birds don't quite cooperate because they're birds. Uh, she was. <laughs> I think birds are not like dogs. They just kind of have a rebellious quality to them. It's in their blood. So the birds would fly away and go stand up on a tree for 15 minutes and they would come back just basically when they wanted to. Although it seemed like she had a level of control. It seemed like she could get them to come back if she really wanted to. I don't know if she, that, like her secret weapon was like a stake in her back pocket or something, but. Anyway, she was very talented once again, another talented performer. One of the things that I loved about uh, photographing this event. But all of the performers had really interesting looks. They were dressed up in garb that was profoundly interesting and that made my photos more exciting. In this case, I love that we have a, her uh, and the bird in the same shot in a nice, concise package. We have another very similar shot of the other performer. I like his expression. It's very expressive. This photo would not have been near as interesting if the bird was was not flapping his wings a little bit, extending them out. Uh, I think it's important to think about what elements make a photo more interesting versus if they were to be another way. Great light on his face. The crowd doesn't clash even though they're part of the photo. They're beautifully out of focus. Uh, it turned out quite nice. One of the things that was a lot of fun about this whole experience was capturing action. I had never been in this particular environment, so bec when if I were to do this 20 times in a row, I would be significantly better than what I was on that day. But I love that beginning point and playing around with that and seeing what I can do. And in this case, I was able to capture a shot of, uh, of our performer here. He was waving a thing around that the bird would chase, and the bird would fly by and then go up and land on another perch somewhere. Um, in this case, that was roughly what was happening. The bird was trying to catch the thing that he was swinging, but he didn't. Now, this is where my limitations came in because you can see his foot is very, very close to the bottom. I could have framed this shot up a little bit better. I could have, uh, I, you know, I could have done many things to make this, to make the bird a little more pronounced. Uh, maybe I moved to a different position, all sorts of nuances that could have made this photo slightly or profoundly better than what it was. But in this case, it turned out quite nice. But the crowds, a little too much, a little too much. It would have been nice if they were a little not so much. Another rather long focal length shot of our performer staring basically at me, holding the bird. They didn't let me go out into the arena. I tried and one of the birds took one of my fingers. I am currently taking this situation to small claims court and I hope to win uh, a sizable sum so that I can at least get a good robotic finger. That was a good finger too, it was on my left hand, I'm left-handed, it's been very problematic. I spill all my drinks. At one point, we were intrigued by a man who was flying around in the forest. He was standing on one of those, um, those circus contraptions that looks like a double Ferris wheel, and they'll run around it and do flips and such. Uh, he was, he, you don't see this much in a forest, so I thought it would be really interesting to zoom in tight uh, into this normal forest scene and have a guy standing up in the air on a giant metal ring, and it turned out quite nicely. 
Uh, he's very talented as well. I also grabbed a crowd shot. I think it captured effectively the density of the event and the uh, the, the decorative wonderfulness of the event. All the signs, you have a giant turkey legs sign, but also the density of the people. There were so many people. I took this photo of my wife because this was a rather high point in the entire experience. All the food there was incredibly unhealthy. We were having a lot of trouble finding a snack. My wife likes fruit, and I think that's one of the greatest things about her. She just likes a simple apple. And she, so we wandered around for a while, and then we found, oh, and also everything was overpriced. It was incredibly overpriced, as they are at these types of events. We found a fruit stand with reasonably priced fruit. It was a life, oh my gosh. And it was so, it was, it was, such a, a a breath of fresh air, such a relieving feeling when we found it. I was like, I'm going to get a banana. She's going to get an apple. We're going to have a good time. Oh, no, you got watermelon, I didn't got, you? I got like three slices of watermelon. <laughs> three slices two of watermelon. bags of grapes, and it was all under $5. Hey, you know, the good thing, though, Christina, is that fruits have good, uh, a high amount of soluble fiber. This was the moment we found the fruit stand. I thought it was a good idea to capture this. Uh, I love the expression on her face. Turned out quite nice. Uh, this is the one of the green apples I bought. I prefer green apples. Now, at the end of our time there came the, the main event. This was what everybody goes to a medieval experience for, a renaissance experience. I'm so sorry if I've offended. We're going to educate ourselves so that we will not be ignorant no more. And um, let's see, medieval period. So the Renaissance was from 1300 to 1600. The medieval period was from, ah, 476 AD to 1492. Columbus sailed the ocean blue. There we go. That was when America was founded in 1476, right? <laughs> <laughs> so at this renaissance themed event, there was the main event and that is jousting um, This was the highlight. This was the the thing that people were born for right Lives I was expecting it to be quite underwhelming. I was expecting it to be to be uh, you know, sort of a family, child-friendly show. The sword fight was, was not, obviously they're not gonna actually stab each other. But it was actually uniquely done, very thoughtfully done in a way that made sense and was quite entertaining. It was a little bit slapstick, especially at the end. They started like throwing people in the air and the princess jumped in and started fighting and stuff. But it was actually a lot of fun. Anyway, at the beginning, there was a short competition where all of the knights would perform tricks on their horses and one of the tricks was where uh, one of the guys like rolled off the side of his horse and rode alongside his horse and i was able to capture this very tight energetic photo it's one of my favorite photos from the event i love how you have him appearing as a a, a mysterious right like where did he come from kind of experience um, i love when i can do that with photos it's one of my favorite things to find in photos when it's, there's a surprising element. It doesn't make sense that it would be there, but it's there. It makes you think. I love how his hair mirrors the horse's hair. Uh, this would be less strong if his hair was short, I think. The red on his shirt also mirrors the red on the horse as well. Worked out quite nice. I'm, I'm very happy with this photo. This next photo is an example of me being ill-prepared. If I were more present and ready, I would have potentially captured this in a more compelling way. If the camera were tilted up just a bit more, I would not have cut off the feet and this could have been a much stronger photo, especially if I get, yeah, I tilt it up, you can uh, have a little bit of space between his feet, even if it's just a little bit, and then you have the crowd clapping in the foreground. I think that would have been stronger, but I put this one in here to, to, to show that if you're looking at the back of your camera when action is happening, you're missing things. Jousting photo. They both died. Another jousting photo. Compositionally, I think this one is more exciting. You have more interesting context. The jousting portion oddly happened very quick and they abruptly went into a rather comedic uh, slapstick approach 
where everything was happening at once. This was the point where the the princess started fighting near the end. There there was a guy who got in a sword fight, which was actually well well choreographed, if you will. And then uh, like he picked him up and threw him on the ground. It got a little bit into the wrestling realm. There was also people on chariots, which was a lot of fun. I'd never seen chariots in uh, with people riding them with swords in person. And I took this photo and I, I realized something interesting that you, you think that there's a lot that goes into making a movie, right? And there is, <laughs> there absolutely is. There, if, if you ever watch behind the scenes documentary of the crew that it takes to, to uh, pre-produce, produce and post-produce and share a movie with the world, it's unbelievable. But at the same time, the way that you capture a scene that feels like a movie is just by setting up the environment to look as if it is in a movie or it's an authentic experience of death and, and battle. And in this case, it this looks like this could have been from a movie. And that's simply because we have some key elements in there that make it feel so. Uh, obviously, all of the subject matter, you have the the chariot and the horses, the guy uh, acting with strong expression on his face, guy behind him with a sword, people in the background, the buildings uh, from from a Renaissance era. Uh, we have the uh, some people in the foreground that are creating a, a subframing, uh, that are acting as a subframing element. But I have a very tight focal length which makes for a rather cinematic look. And in this case, this looks like this could be a moment from, you know, Troy, if the samurai was to appear. There's samurai in Troy. Another one of my favorite photos from the experience happened. By the way, when you're in the middle of these experiences and everything is happening, you're going to tend to feel like you're not taking good photos for a majority of the time. And then maybe if you're lucky, you'll hit a moment where you see that you really grab something good. But sometimes you really don't know what you get until the the end. And what I'm learning is that I need to be more comfortable. This this is one of my growing points in, in photography. I need to be more comfortable being within that friction and being comfortable in it and thriving in it. That friction of this is all going terribly because it is a preponderance of photos that will produce a good photo, more so than just being in the right place at the right moment sometimes. In this case, one of my favorite photos was when they were clashing. This also looks like this could be from a movie minus the, the crowd of modern people in the background with their sunglasses and iPhones and such. Lots of action, lots of dust flying around. They're about to hit their swords, strong expressions. I cropped the photo to where the horses were going out of the frame at the exact same position on either side of the frame, which makes this photo feel organized and symmetrical, even though there's a lot of chaos happening. These photos for me are as much about the crowd and their experience of what's going on as they are about the event. And I, I think that it can be easy to just focus on what's happening in front of you and not turn your camera around and point it at the crowd sometimes. The only time I legitimately turned my camera around and pointed at the crowd was, in this case was when Waldo appeared, but um, there there is opportunity everywhere when taking photos. And I think it's important to remember that. In this case, I have a photo of the two swordsmen locking swords, nice separation between them. The swords are hitting at a pleasing spot. Their expressions are nice, some dirt being kicked up around. Then we have the crowd in the background reacting to them. Another photo from a similar standpoint, but in this one, if you notice, there is another layer of context, context and depth injected. We have also a man running by. We have one more shot similar to the previous to the previous one with extreme action. And then finally, we have this shot of the guy picking the other guy up and throwing him on to the ground, which I hear immediately kills your assailant. Uh, we have a strong reaction from a lot of the crowd members, which was something that I wanted to focus in on a bit more. If you look very closely, there's people with like hands on their head and they're laughing, they're really enjoying it. And that is it for this one. This is an authentic representation of what it would be like to do street photography in the 1500s, and I'm glad that I could bring you guys there today. 
uh, hopefully they had healthier food more so back then. I don't know if they had a lot of blogs that they could look at. But um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram at James the Red. Please feel free to interact with me on there. Comment below uh, if you have any questions about my process. And I hope you have a lovely day. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, you're great. Goodbye.